Boy, Vic XL. This is the Ride Dirty Radio Show, where we bridge. That's right, we bridge the gap between hip hop and everyday life. This is the show. If you got a story to tell, then we are the platform for you. I always, always like to start the show off by saying, by saying one time to the good people over at WRFG eighty nine point three FM. Again, I gotta say one time for the good people over at WRFG eighty nine point three. FM Atlanta, Georgia, our FM home for the over over 15 plus years, holding down, holding down the spot. All right, again, one time for WRFG 89.3 FM Atlanta. If it wasn't no you, then it would probably be no us. So thank you guys, thank you guys. Also, I gotta say one time for the good people at Live365.com. All right, Live365.com. Let me let you know a little bit about them. Live365.com. They are the internet's oldest streaming. Site. Now, this is not the site where you go download and listen to your favorite music. No. This is not the site where you listen to your favorite album. No. They are a streaming site for internet radio. All right. A lot of a lot of your favorite terrestrial radio stations, when the internet boomed, they needed a home where they can broadcast via the internet. And they turned to Live 365. All right, Live365 is the place where you can go hear some of your favorite internet radio stations across the world or some of your favorite terrestrial radio stations across the world. Now, the really, really cool part about it is we have partnered up with Live365 and launched our very own internet radio station. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's welcome to the world. Our radio station, Ride 9.5. All right, the way to access our station is easy. All you got to do is go to live365.com in the search engine, type in Ride, R-I-D-E. The number is 9.5. Click on the station logo, and there you have music and original programming. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Now, you might ask yourself, well, how can I, how can I check out Ride 9.5 via my mobile device? It's just as simple. All you got to do is download the Live 365 app. Download the Live 365 app. Then go to the search engine. Type in Ride 95. Once you type in Ride 95, click on that station logo. And there you have it. Music, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. So again, one time for the good people over at Ride 95 for giving us a platform to launch our very own media base. Internet radio station. Now, for a lot of people who might not know what media base means, media base means if your music, if your artist and your music is currently registered through ASCAP, BMI, or Sound Exchange, then your spins will count. All right, your spins will count just like being played on terrestrial radio. All right, now that's important because if you want to earn revenue for your music, then your music has to be tracked. You got to know how many times it's being played around the world throughout the country. And that's what we are. We are a media-based company that pays royalties to the artists that music is properly registered through the proper channels. So again, one time for the good people of Live365.com for giving us a platform to launch our brand new baby, Ride95. And one time for all the people that's been supporting the station. The feedback has been very, very well. I definitely appreciate you guys. One time for my uh, man, DJ Power Lord, my program director, who definitely, definitely keeps the music tight and right. And one time to all the DJs who um, basically have supplied us with original programming, man. Like I said, we got a dope, dope lineup of music over there for you to check out, man. So again, one time for our radio station, Ride 9-5. All right. Today is uh, Thursday, October the 15th. And I'm going to go down a little celebrity birthdays with you guys really, really quick. First and foremost, got to say happy birthday to R&B singer. I haven't heard a lot of music from her since she started doing a reality show. But happy birthday to reality star R&B singer Miss Keisha Cole. Keisha Cole turns 
39 years old today. Man, it did not seem like she was that old. Got to say happy birthday to um, heavyweight champion, heavyweight boxing champion, Mr. Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua turns 31 years old today. Also got to say happy birthday to Mr. If you want it, let's do it. Ride it. My pony. Happy birthday to Genuine. Genuine turns the big 5-0. That's right. Genuine is 50 years old today. Definitely happy birthday to Genuine. Hopefully he's just out there enjoying life. Also got to say happy birthday to one of the famed members of the Jackson family, the Jackson clan, Mr. Tito Jackson. Tito Jackson turns 67 years old today. Happy birthday, Tito. And last but not least, got to say happy birthday to rapper, producer, super producer, Polo the Don, formerly of the group Jim Crow out of Atlanta. Polo the Don turns 43 years old today. Happy birthday, Polo. Now, you know what? I always like to tell you guys, a great way to tell an artist or entertainer or celebrity happy birthday is by checking out their past work, present work, future work, and also check them out on social media. And make sure if you follow them on social media, and you choose to tell them happy birthday, make sure you hashtag the Ride Dirty Radio Show and let them know that you heard it was their birthday via the Ride and Dirty Show, okay? All right, now, really, really quick, for those who didn't know, October 15th is National Latino AIDS Awareness Day. That's right. Today, October 15th, is National Latino AIDS Awareness Day. All right, it encourages prevention, testing, and open dialogue concerning HIV and AIDS amongst the Latino community. Now, the best way to observe this is easy. Go get tested every few months. All right? Know your partner's HIV status. Have sex that is not risky. And that means using a condom every time. All right? Limit the number of sexual partners you are with. And um, again, man, one time for everybody who's definitely, definitely supporting the movement and what we got going on here. <sighs> okay. For those who don't know, and this has to be the dumbest, weirdest news I've heard in a while. Memphis rapper Young Dolph. Memphis rapper Young Dolph is being sued for causing a soldier to have a mental breakdown over a twerk video, all right? There is a soldier suing Young Dolph, say he had a mental breakdown after watching a Young Dolph twerk video. What, 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 what? Man, it's crazy. All I can say is that crazy. All right. <laughs> I don't even, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even know know what to say. I don't even, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. All, that's crazy. All right. <laughs> man, one time for my man, Two Chains, uh, female rapper, Sweetie, NLE Chopper. Um, they basically, and some more artists, they've actually basically been tapped to do, um, the HBCU homecoming, but this is going to be a live stream event due to COVID-19, but definitely one time to Two Chains, Sweetie and NLE Chopper for definitely, definitely doing their thing. Okay. All right, man. That's it for celebrity news, okay? That's it for celebrity news. Now it's time for me to do what I enjoy doing most, and that's bringing you the people on the street, the people that are definitely doing their thing, whether it's through arts, entertainment, philanthropism, entrepreneurship, music. However, you're changing the culture, then the Ride and Dirty Show is the place for you. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to welcome to the Ride and Dirty platform, singer, songwriter, Olympian, Dr. Sharifa Barksdale. How you doing today, ma'am? 
Stefan, how are you doing? And thank you so much for allowing allowing me to be on your platform and be on your show. I really appreciate it. Oh, I really appreciate you taking time to talk to us, and I'm so excited to talk to you. You know, the first thing, and this is crazy. This is crazy because I'm a big TV fan, and I have never, ever <laughs> met, I have never met a Barksdale in my life. And I've been on this earth quite a while. So when I see your name, wow. the first thing that came to my mind was The Wire and Avon Barksdale. You ever heard of that TV show? Yes, 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 I watched it, yes. <laughs> that was the first thing. And I know that's a fictitious character, but that was just, the, I'm like, man, I'm going to talk to Avon Barksdale, sister. <laughs> Yes, that that was that was a that was a a, a good show. It was, very, yeah. it was very very powerful show before its time. So, Miss Bar yes, Miss yes. Miss Barksdale, let's take these people on a journey through the life of Dr. Sharifa Barksdale. The first thing I want you to do is tell the people where you're from and what your childhood was like. Well, I'm from a small town called Harriman, Tennessee. That's H-A-R-R-I-M-A-N. It's 45 minutes uh, uh, going east from Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and my childhood life, I had a great childhood life, except for my father. He was a minister, and he passed away at age 40, uh, 42 of a massive heart attack. So my mother was left to raise uh, me, my brother, and my two uh, two other sisters, but I had three other older sisters that were that was older. So uh, my mother um, was very strict on us, and she wanted us to have the best, but she always told us that if you're going to do anything in life, you don't give it 100%, but you give it 200%. And you treat people the way you want to be treated, but you always work hard because nothing in life is free. So that has carried with me until today. I have instilled that into my two children who are grown. And as a child, I just knew um, I was in I was in so much, so much activity. She kept us very busy. So my brother, uh, he played football. And so he ran track. So I wanted to be just like my brother, but my brother, he's deceased now, but I wanted to be like him. And everybody in the neighborhood, they knew I was fast. So I would beat the guys, I would beat the girls. I mean, we would run from, from um, um, pole light to pole light. And, you know, when it got dark at 9 o'clock, you had to come on inside. So everybody wanted to challenge little Sharifa. And I was, a, I mean, I was a daredevil back then. And so um, moving forward, my brother was, uh, was in high school. He ran track, so I wanted to be like him. So um, I remember the movie Willa Rudolph came on, uh, Tiger Bell, and I remember – uh, seen that movie, so I went to the librarian and I asked the librarian if I could have a book on Wilma Rudolph, and she said, "Silly girl, why do you want a book on Wilma Rudolph?" I said, "Because I'm going to be an Olympian," and so she laughed. And so it took me about 20 to 30 minutes to find this book on Wilma Rudolph. So I found it and everything. So um, fast forward, because the story is kind of uh, long. So fast forward, I ran I, because I want to be like my brother. I ran a track in. Um, Ninth grade, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. Well, my twelfth grade year, I received a call from Wilma Rudolph, but I hung up on her because I thought it was a joke. Because my mentor Ralph Balsa, who was in the Olympic Games, he was uh, he coached me summer track club in Knoxville, Tennessee. So I hung up on her. Then he called me back. He said, Sharifa, do you know who you just hung up on? I said, No, my friend up the street. He said, No, you hung up on Wilma Rudolph. Man, let me tell you something. I freaked out. I mean, and when I tell you I freaked out, I freaked out. So she gave me some words of encouragement before I went to the state track meet, and I won the state track meet single-handedly as a one-woman team. All right. I got to say, did she call back? Yeah, they. Yeah, she called. Yeah, yeah. he called back. He went three-way. So she called, she called, she was on three-way with, with, with Ralph Foster, and that's when she gave me the words of encouragement to go out there and just have fun and do what I uh, know best. Now, in high school, we didn't have a track. I ran on grass. And so my father, he, he was a brick mason, so I took his two-by-four and some bricks, and I made my own hurdles. So I really taught myself how to run track. I long jump the 100, the 200. Um, the high jump and the hurdles, and I also did the pentathlon. So I, all my records still stand because back then there was dashes. 
So the only record that uh, that um, got broken was the was the hundred meter hurdles and the high jump. But my other records, they still stand today because now it's meters. Okay. Now, with that advice that she gave you, like how far into life did you take that advice? I took that advice all the way to the Olympic Games. And I, I got a scholarship to University of Tennessee. And the only reason why I went to University of Tennessee because my brother played football. He was the first true freshman to start in football. But my original plan wasn't going to Tennessee. I wanted to go to Tennessee, but the night that I was getting ready to sign my scholarship to Old Dominion, I got a telephone call from the coach at Tennessee. And they said that they wanted me to run track for them, but they could not give me a full scholarship. And I told them I take it. Now, mind me, my mother and the people from Old Dominion sitting in the living room waiting for me to get off the phone to come and sign this scholarship. And so I had to tell them that I'm going to University of Tennessee. And so Dr. Gibson, <laughs> Kenneth Gibson, who is still in my life today, he just shook his head. He said, well, I can't compete with University of Tennessee. So they drove back to Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia. And from there, it was it was it was just it was just history. And I just knew in 1984 that I knew what I had to do to make the Olympic team. But I didn't go in as running the 400 meter hurdles because I was just strictly a sprinter, ran on relays and long jump. And I learned how to perfect the 400 meter hurdles in less than two years to get me ready for the Olympic Games. And I set the American record in 1983 of being the first woman to go under. 55 seconds. All right, now I, let's let's talk a little bit about the Olympic Games. Again, what year um, were you there, <laughs> and what events did you participate in? Okay, I was there in 1984, and I ran the 400 meter hurdles, and oh. I took ninth uh, ninth over overall out of 64 girls. All right, what a, what a, what do you remember most about those Olympics? The what I remember most is that we uh, we were we came out of the tunnel, and I will always get sick before I run. I would break into hives, and I threw up right before my race. And Ronaldo Nehemiah said he they was live on TV. They said I just cannot believe that Sharifa Bark still just threw up on the track. So they had to go to a commercial break because they had to. Um, uh, take the whole water hose and water down the track. So when we, when the gun, I was just, I mean, when I tell you, I was literally terrified, I was terrified. So when the gun went off, it was, it was, it was on. They had me to win the Olympic Games. So when we came off of that eighth hurdle, I could see Judy Brown and I could see uh, Angela Wright. And then there was me and another girl named Lori McCullough. So I saw Judy Brown go first across the finish line. And then I'm seeing Angela. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm not going to make the Olympic team. I'm not going to make the Olympic team. So I had to really dig because Lori McCullough, she was right beside me. And I could see her from the corner of my eyes. And I knew if I outleaned her, I would make the Olympic team. But we both leaned at the same time. So it took them, seemed like it took them for 15, 20 minutes to give us the results. And they were, you know, going back and forth saying who took third. And the only reason why I beat, beat her because I outlinked her is because my torso was a lot bigger than her torso. Okay. All right. Um, and, that's how I made, and that's how I made the Olympic team. All right. Now, from that experience, because that's definitely a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I'm, you got to meet some amazing people. Um, what is, did, do you have any relationships from that experience that you still carry today? Oh, yes. Like Jackie Jordan Kersey, uh, uh, Jackie, Jackie Jordan Kersey and I, we were best friends. We talked probably maybe 10 times a day, every single day. And so most of the, mo the majority of the men and women that was on that team we're best we're best friends. We talk we talk every other day and the camaraderie is really great because I'm good friends with Carl Lewis, um, Chandra Cheeseboro, Johnny Gray, and the list just goes on and on. And so we have and Judy Brown that competed with me, we have that type of relationship, and especially with social media now, you really can keep in contact 
with your with your peers. Okay. All right. Now, what would be your words of encouragement, especially for ladies out there who want to pursue track and one day be an Olympian? Well, and seeing that I, I am a coach because I have my own company called One-on-One -on -One Training Academy with Sharifa. And what I would tell young women and men, young boys, is that follow your dreams. And sometimes you may not understand where your path is going to carry you, but it's not going to come down out of the sky. You have to work hard. And when I say work hard, you have to work hard and do exactly what your coach asks of you in terms of working out. Uh, because you can't have hard work at the end of the day. And the sky's the limit because the word no and can't isn't in your vocabulary, it's only in the book that you read. So if you know yourself, you believe in yourself, and you work hard, any dream is attainable. So for an example, so say that you have a track meet on Saturday, but your friends want to go out and hang out on Friday. You can't let your friends influence you to go out with, go out and hang out with them because their dreams of gold may not be the same as yours. You have to separate yourself because now you have to become extraordinary and the people that become that are extraordinary they're the one that put in the hard work the dedication and the time everybody can't be an olympian everybody can't be a, 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 a basketball player or an nfl player but you choose your path and whatever path that you choose you make sure that you give a 200 percent of your time to it because if you don't work hard don't expect to get out of what you don't put in no doubt, no. But you know what's funny? You said some very key and pertinent to some inf some advice my mother gave me um, as a youngster. But I carried that advice every day in my life, and that was your dream is not everybody else's dream. So you have to step away That's from right. the, you have to step away from the pack to pursue your dream. Like you know, your dream might yeah. not be cool to them, or you might have to. As, as 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 you know, Uncle of mine said, sometimes you gotta cut the shout shit shout. Like you gotta go, you gotta go yeah. do what you gotta do for yourself. And um, my mom definitely implements that into me now. Like your dreams are your dreams. So, I man, that's right. I I, I thank you for definitely setting forth that. See, the thing about no, go ahead. Right, and the, and the thing about it is what God see. God already has a plan for everybody, everybody's life, and. What God has for you is for you. So don't be jealous of the next person. Don't envy the next person. And that's what I tell my kids because you work, you work your craft. You be who you that who God wants you to be, not what somebody else or what society says. That's who you are. Because people will try to tear your dreams down. People will try to tear you down and tell you that you're a nobody, that you're not going to make it, that you're stupid, that you're dumb, and that you're not capable of being the great athlete or the great person that you are. Those are toxic people getting into your ear. So you have to separate and eliminate those people, whether it's your friend, whether it's your mother, your boyfriend, or whomever. If they don't have your best interest at heart, cut them loose. And it's just like I tell people when I go out and do motivational speaking. You have a school bus, and on this school bus, you have people on the school bus. At some point, these negative people that you have on your school bus, you have to pull over, let them out, because they're weighing your school bus down, and now you got a flat tire. Let them off, because they can't ride on your school bus, because the school bus where you're going, they can't ride. So if they want to re-enter your life, then you can go back and pick them up on that school bus from on the side of the road. But you gotta let them out. <laughs> all right, no doubt. So look, Miss Sharifa, we'll be talking all day about that. Let's let's switch gears a little bit and let's talk a little bit about your okay. music about your musical journey. Like at what point did you say, you know what, not only am I Olympian, but I'm going to be a successful recording artist? Well, I've been singing ever since I was little, and my mother was an opera singer, and God bless her heart, she's 93 years old, and she still can sing, and everyone in my family can sing, so I've always, I've always sung, it's just that I've never been on this level of singing, and uh, Rose, uh, Rose Green, 
she heard my voice, she heard my music, and so she said, we have something here. And the song that, uh, that my first release will be tomorrow called Strong Women. And it's about women and domestic violence and knowing who you are. And my music career, God gave me this song. I just didn't, it, I, it, I don't have no control of this song. I was asleep. He woke me up out of, this, out of my sleep, and I began to write this song. Because I write many songs, and I'm one that can, if you gave me a title, I can make up a song right then and there. It's, I'm just gifted like that. And that gift comes from God. And so I started writing the song, and I have a friend over there in Zimbabwe that I've done some recording some of his some of his music and um he said well he said can you sing the song acapella and so i said i can sing it acapella so he sent me some beats some music and i picked the second one because it fits the song so i sung it acapella he couldn't believe that i sung it acapella and he put the music to it so that's how uh strong women came to life all right, let's talk a little bit about the content. You said it's about uh, domestic violence, domestic abuse, but let's talk a little bit about why that subject matter is near and dear to your heart. Well, because I'm a survivor of uh, domestic violence, and I've been speaking. I go, I've been speaking for such a long time to uh, shelters and everything. I'm a survivor, so I know what women go go through. And again, God, it was this time. It, it was it was time for me to do do this song. I've been wanting to do a song, but you know, timing is everything. And sometimes when we try to do things on our own, we tend to mess it up. But if we let God order our footsteps, He's the on time God. So that's the reason why this song and this project is dear to my heart because it's the right time. Uh, it's touching on. I mean, when I tell you it's a deep, it's a deep song, and the video is going to be even deeper when it released tomorrow, and it's going I think it's going to heal a lot of women that's been abused, because when I tell you I went through it for 20 years, and I, today, by the grace of God, I'm living to tell my story. What would be, you know, because a lot of times, um, it's a lot of women, and even men or children, a lot of people who suffer from domestic abuse or any form of abuse, um, a lot of times they're afraid to step up and talk about it. A lot of times it's embarrassing to them. A lot of times they don't want nobody to know. And a lot of times they love the person so much that they feel like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to embarrass them. What would be your words of advice to those who are going through any form of domestic abuse or domestic violence? And you're absolutely right because people, you know, they feel, they feel ashamed and they feel like, you know, what would my uh, family say if I come out and talk about uh, domestic violence and it happened and it happened to me? Uh, the advice that I would give them is that talk about seconds. it be because it took me a long time to talk about it and to heal because when I did talk about it, I would break down and cry. So now that I have healed on the inside, I can talk about it without crying. So it, it, it doesn't happen overnight, but you have to take the first step of telling someone and getting out because domestic violence doesn't have a name on you because it could happen to anyone, anybody, elderly people, men get abused by women, children get, get abused. And when the children see their mother being abused by the father or the boyfriend and they constantly see it, that's all they know. So they feel like this is the norm. This is the way it's supposed to be. This is the way love's supposed to be. Ten love seconds. Love is supposed to cherish you. Love is supposed to hold you. Love is supposed to pick you up when you fall. What abuse is, is not love because you have mental abuse. You have physically abuse. You have uh, sexual abuse. You have spiritual abuse. You have all these abuse and you have narcissists that plays on, on that. You have professional con artists that plays on that, and you feel like you can't get out because every time you try to leave, he does something to pull you back. And, and I know this because I dealt with it for 20 years. And so then it came a time when I looked at my children. I said, is it going to be them or is it going to be him? And I chose my children, and that's how I got out of, my situ out of my situation because I was not going to have my children be a victim in the hands of domestic violence. So I tell you out there, men, women, if you've been abused, 
It's going to take some time, but you can get out. You have to take that first step because you have to look in the mirror. You got to say, do I really, and I know you look, have looked in the mirror because I have, and do I really deserve this? Do I really deserve to be beat down? Do I deserve to be talked to well that? Because people, and we as human beings, women, we always want to make excuses for the abuser. Oh, well, he, he had a bad day at work. Well, he did, he did, he lost his job. There's no excuses for an abuser. They are weak. People who beat on women, you weak. I agree. So if you're out there and you're listening, you can, you can get out. But it may take some time because you got to find it, the release within yourself. And I know you want to talk to some people. People may not understand your situation. People may not even understand your journey. And people will say, well, why do you get out? Why do you get It's easy said than done. I agree 200% in what you're saying. Look, we're going to close this interview out by introducing the song. But before we do, what I want you to do is, because we live in the world, we live in the era of the World Wide Web and social media. Let the people know how to keep up with Dr. Sharifa Barksdale and how to hear this amazing song. Okay, my, I'm on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, tick, uh, TikTok. And my handle is sbark, B-A-R-K, 1984. And you can reach out to me if you just need someone to talk to. I will answer you back because I believe in giving back. I believe in trying to help my next person become successful and to get over abuse. So if you hear me out there, hit me up, and I will follow you back, and I will answer any questions that you wish for me to answer. All right. And uh, tomorrow, is, uh, tomorrow the phone drops, and we will go live tomorrow on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Twitter at 6.30 tomorrow. All right, I'm going to be checking you out tomorrow, Ms. Barksdale, at 6.30. I'm definitely going to be <laughs> I'm gonna be checking out your live tomorrow at 6.30. I will definitely be there. Do me one big favor and announce this record to the people. The song that you're getting ready to hear is Strong Women. Thank you, because so Because you are strong, believe it or not. All right, Dr. Barksdale. Thank you so much for coming on the show and being a blessing. Thank you so much. I really, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate you giving me the opportunity to come on your show and speak. God bless you. Now, Dr. Barksdale, if you ever come to Atlanta, Georgia, I want to challenge you to a foot race. <laughs> hey, I'm ready. <laughs> Hey, look, look, I, I, I'm ready. I don't know if I can go as fast as I used to, but I'm ready. <laughs> now, look, look, I wonder, look, because I see you, like, you're from Harriman, Tennessee, a small place in Tennessee. My last question is, when you was running as, as a teenager, were you running barefooted? Yes, sir. Or as my, grand, <laughs> or as my granddad would say, were you running barefooted? Yeah, hey, look, I, hey, I was, I, I used to run barefoot. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. Dr. Barksdale, thank you so much. And I'll be checking you out tomorrow, all right? Okay, thank you. And you have a blessed day. You as well. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Strong Woman by Dr. Sharifa Barksdale right here on the Ryan Dirty Show. Get What up, lovely international stars? What up, mom? who's been through domestic violence and who have survived, just know that God gave us praying hands.
They try to break up They try to beat us down We survive the messes violence Strong Women by Dr. Sharifa Barksdale. Y'all definitely, definitely make sure y'all check her out tomorrow on Facebook and Instagram Live at 6.30. She's going to be going live, and they're going to be debuting the video to that joint. All right? One time for the good people over at International Stars. One time the lovely, one time for my beautiful mother, one time for my beautiful wife, always supporting and checking in. It's your boy, Vic XL. This is the Riding Dirty Radio Show, where we bridge the gap between hip-hop and everyday life. Y'all do me a favor. Stay black. Stay gangster. We'll see y'all tomorrow.